talk to you this time about low pass filters. Now that might seem a little odd to be talking about something so electronic in a YouTube channel that was originally at least devoted to strength of materials, but it's actually pretty important and I can tell you why. A low pass filter shows up in lots of electronics, but in particular it shows up in data acquisition systems. Any good data acquisition system has one or more low pass filters in them. They're often called anti-aliasing filters. Well, without getting too far into the, the lingo of what all this stuff means, let me talk about just real basic low pass filters. Once you have the basic idea, that's mostly that's all you'll need. So I'm going to tell you a couple things. I'm going to tell you how, what a low pass filter is and maybe why you should care. Then I'm going to show you how a simple low pass filter is really just a modification of a voltage divider. We went over voltage dividers before, and it's really pretty simple. You'll find out that uh, low pass filters aren't very hard either. And then I'll give you an example calculation, okay? So let's get going here. Let's start with what is a voltage divider? Well, or a low pass filter. Low pass filters, we use those in frequency domain. It's easy to describe them in frequency domain. Okay, let's say, well, let's take my hearing. My hearing's not very good. I, I was exposed to a lot of, uh, well, I exposed myself to a lot of loud noises when I was younger, and it's affected my hearing. I can't hear anything above about 11 kilohertz, which I'm told actually isn't too bad for somebody my age. But if there's a sound in the air at 12, 14 kilohertz that my students can hear, I can't hear it. Okay? So my ears actually have a low-pass filter built in. Not the way I would want, but, you know, it happens. So let's look at what that looks like in frequency domain. Well, let's say there's some music, and it's got some content. Now remember, this isn't time here, this is frequency, okay? And let's say that's maybe 10K and that's 20K, all right? The normal human hearing range goes from 20 hertz to 20 kilohertz. Well, that's the nominal one. That means somebody with really, really good hearing, maybe a, a child or somebody who's never been exposed to any loud noises, can hear from you know, very, very low frequencies, 20 hertz. And 20 hertz you almost feel more than you hear all the way up here to 20K. Well, 20K is a very, very high frequency, and if I ever could hear it, I certainly can't now. Well, what happens, is, happening to my hearing, is once the sound that's in the air that really does have content out here passes through my ears, here's what I hear. Okay? That's it. I don't hear anything up here. And most people my age have, have a drop-off. It's, it's pretty normal. Um, so here's the music I hear, and here's the part I didn't, I don't hear anymore. And of course, my students can can uh, send each other signals at these frequencies, and I can't hear it. Right. So that's what a low pass filter does. It just kills off high frequencies. The low frequencies pass. Now I gave the example of my hearing. That's maybe not a very good one. Why would you want to do that in data acquisition? Well, for mathematical reasons. Um, there's a limit to how fat, how much information you can put into the data acquisition system. Now, let's say that the limit is 10 kilohertz. The, the, the system can't listen to anything going faster than that, at, at higher frequencies than that. Well, the data you're recording may have content at higher frequencies, but for mathematical reasons, it's very important that those higher frequencies don't get to the data acquisition system. They create a mathematical error called aliasing. So you have anti-aliasing filters. And here's what an anti-aliasing filter looks like in frequency domain. There's frequency and amplitude, okay? And it goes up to there, and then it drops off. With that right there being what's called the corner frequency, FC. All right, that's 1, and that's 0. So what happens is data comes into the data acquisition system, and the first thing it hits is this low-pass filter, this anti-aliasing filter. It's an anti-aliasing filter. Now, what happens is everything below the corner frequency goes through unchanged because it gets multiplied by 1. Well, if I multiply anything by 1, I don't change it. So data that comes in below the, the, the corner frequency, and we'll say that's 10 kilohertz, gets multiplied by 1. Everything after this corner frequency gets multiplied by something smaller than 1. Now, for mathematical reasons, there's no such thing as a filter that actually just does this. It's a, just a, a wall there. We'd, we'd like it if that were true, but so far we don't have any real good ones. Um, so what we do have is filters that drop off very quickly. Now this is in a, actually a log-log scale. I haven't shown it here, but I'll show you later. This is on a log-log scale. So this drops off really fast, okay? And that's called filter roll-off right there. But what happens is when you get to just a little bit above 
the uh, corner frequency, you're multiplying every all the data that comes in by zero. It stops it. So low frequencies pass, high frequencies are stopped. It's a low pass filter. Right? And this is something that's absolutely ubiquitous. It's everywhere in electronics, and even though you might not know it, you're using these when you make uh, uh, measurements. Okay? So low-pass filters, audio folks using low-pass filters absolutely all the time. We're using them for conditioning DC power. They're all over the place in circuits, too. So it would be kind of nice if we knew what, what the, how these things worked. Well, let's go back to the voltage divider, and I'm going to make one or two small changes. Okay, there's something like the voltage divider I drew in one of the earlier videos. I've made one change so far, and that's right here. Instead of that being a battery, which makes only DC power, the, the voltage doesn't change with time, this is assumed that the voltage does change with time. It might be something simple like a sine wave. You know, the power that comes through the walls is AC power, and it's just sinusoidal. But it might be some other signal like audio. Audio is an AC signal. My voice, if you were to record it with a mic, actually like I'm doing now, if you were to plot the audio track of this uh, video, you'd see all these wiggles in time. Well, that's an AC signal, so then maybe this is a microphone. It's something that makes a voltage. We'll call that Vn, understanding that now Vn changes with time. It's not DC anymore. And if you remember, this was V out. Now, when that was a DC signal, I could use a voltmeter. And where's my, my voltmeter? Okay, I can use my little voltmeter and take my two leads right here, and I could put them right there, and I could see what voltage was coming across the out. Well, now this is an AC signal, and so instead of using a voltmeter, I have to use an oscilloscope. Uh, different kind of box, but what it does is it draws a little line on the screen that shows you what the voltage looks like as a function of time. All right. So instead of this being another resistor on the low pass filter, this is now a capacitor. Okay? Slightly different component, but the, you can see this still looks an awful lot like a voltage divider. And it behaves almost like a voltage divider. The only difference is now it's a, what, what, how it behaves is a function of frequency. And the way we figure that out turns out the mathematics is almost exactly the same as it was for a voltage divider. All right, so that's handy. Now, there's the resistance of that resistor and the capacitance of that capacitor. Well, those are useful, but not quite what we want. Rather than resistance, we want to look at something called impedance. Okay, and impedance is just the AC version of R. It's just the AC version of resistance. Okay? Now, when you're working with impedance, Ohm's law still works, Kirchhoff's voltage law still works. Everything's great. So impedance is a great thing. It, it tells us a lot of interesting stuff, and we get to use all of the uh, mathematical rules we used before. So what we need to know is now is what's the impedance of these two things? Well, the resistance doesn't change with frequency. Resistors act the same no matter what the frequency is. So the impedance of a resistor is just R, just like the resistance was. By the way, Z, for whatever reason, Z always means impedance, at least every time I've ever seen impedance, it was always Z. So whenever I write Z, that's impedance. Remember, just the DC ver or the AC version of resistance. The impedance of a capacitor, now I wouldn't have guessed this one. I'm not sure who came up with this, but this is, this is really interesting. There's frequency, omega, that's frequency in radians per second. C is the capacitance, that's that number right there, how big the capacitor is. And J. Now remember, in the electrical engineering world, J is the square root of minus 1. Okay, square root of minus 1. In most of the rest of the world, I is the square root of minus 1. But in the electrical engineers prefer to use J because I is always reserved for current. Right? Whenever you see I in an electrical engineering equation, you're talking current. So J, or the square root of minus 1, has to be something else. They pick J. All right? Um, so this is going to be real easy. We're going to use Kirchhoff's voltage law, right? KVL, sometimes you shorten it as, and that's voltage around a loop has to be zero. Okay? Well, Vn minus current times R minus current times 1 over J omega C. Okay? That's Ohm's law and Ohm's law again, just written in terms of AC rather than DC terms. It's okay. Equals zero. Right? Well, it would be nice if I had um, just plus signs here, so I'm going to do 
equal that. Okay, I just pushed the other two terms to the other side of the equation. So there we go. Well, now what? Well, let's see. According to uh, Ohm's law, the voltage drop across the resistor is I R, and the voltage drop across the capacitor is I times 1 over J omega C, and that also equals V out. Okay? So the voltage drop there and the voltage drop there are the same. Well, let's plug that in. Okay? Do that first. So I get V in equals I R plus V out. Okay, well, that's not too surprising. But I'm still not where I need to be at. I still got that I in there. And I don't want that there. I don't want to have to know what the current is. And it turns out it doesn't, doesn't matter what the current is. And we'll find that out here in a second. So since I've got my little board, I'm going to rate that up there and I'm going to keep going. So V in equals I R plus V out. All right, so get rid of all this stuff. Now, I've still got to get rid of that I. Well, let's see. I know that V out equals I times 1 over J omega C. Well, let's see, I could solve that for I, couldn't I? V out times J omega C equals I. All right, now I can plug that back in there. So now I'm going to rewrite this equation down here. V in equals V out times J omega R C, because that R's got to be there, plus V out. Okay? Now, I'm going to bring it on home here. What I want to do is I want to show V out over V in. That's called the transfer function. That plot I drew over here that went from 1 to 0, that was a transfer function. So I want to write an expression for what that looks like. Well, if I do that, I'm going to get, let's see, 1 over 1 plus J R, J omega R C, I guess. Let me make sure I got that right. Okay. That's the transfer function. That tells you how a uh, low-pass filter works. There's one other number you're going to need, and that's what's called the, well, here, let me, let me put a plot up here. I'll show you what it looks like. I actually plotted that equation right there. I made up a value of R and a value of C. And uh, here's what I got. Put that up there. And up there, real high tech, huh? There you go. But you can see it goes 1, 1, 1, 1, all of a sudden it drops off. And I don't know if you can see the gray lines here, but this is a log log plot, all right? So let me push this over here and maybe a little bit and get it out of the way. And over here, I'll show you how we do this. The, the roll-off frequency, the cutoff frequency, is 1 over RC in radians per second, or 1 over 2 pi RC in hertz. Okay? So let's say I want, um, I don't know, let's say R equals 1,000 uh, ohms, right. and let's say that C is 1 microfarad, okay, that's 10 to the minus 6, well, let's see, 1 over RC is going to be 1 over 1,000 times 1 over 10 to the minus 6, that's going to equal a thousand radians per second. And that'll be the cutoff frequency. That means that's where this drops off. That's about there. Cutoff frequency is actually when it drops down, uh, down 3 dB. So basically about 0 0.707 times there. Right? That's the cutoff frequency. So there's, there you go. This is a low pass filter. We know what they are. We know what they do. We know how they act. And we now have an expression that we can actually plot now, and we can calculate the cutoff frequencies. Okay? So you can pick resistances and capacitances that put that point where you need it.